We finally made it to the last part of a four part series on how to create a full network using OpenSense. The last step is to set up the wireless access point. So let's get started. If you recall in my previous video when I was setting up the Cisco network switch that I had the wireless access point plugged into the fourth port and we already configured that port uh, in the previous video uh, in preparation to do this step where we're configuring the wireless access point. So um, one thing I want to note in case you missed the first video, I'm using a power over ethernet adapter. Um, if your switch supports power over ethernet, you wouldn't need that, but I'm using it for uh, this purpose because this switch does not support power over, power over ethernet. You'll notice when you first turn on the wireless access point that, um, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but the LEDs on this, um, uh, wireless access point and it'll turn purple to indicate that it's ready to be uh, configured. Before we switch over to the screen, one other thing is you notice I had these the, these two PCs up here, the RD6S that I've been using uh, in my example as clients on the network. Um, the second R86S or the first one, I guess I should say, um, I had it connected to um, I think port 13. When we're configuring the wireless access point, we need to be on the, uh, the uh, untagged or, or native VLAN, whatever you want to call it, the default VLAN and VLAN one, which the rest of the switch, since we didn't configure anything else on the switch, basically any other port that we configured besides, you know, these ports that we're connected to here, um, will be on the default VLAN. Um, so basically all I did was I moved it from like port 13 to some other port on the other, you know, further down on the switch. So you'll need to do that first so that you're in, in check your IP address on this machine. It should be in the dot one network range. So that's the way you know that you're on your untagged network, that's your management network. So once you're connected to that other network, we'll, we'll log in here in a second and we'll go ahead and configure this wireless access point. This will be probably the easiest part of this whole guide is setting up the wireless access point. Okay, now let's switch over to the uh, computer and we'll go in there and lo uh, log into the management interface on this and get this configured. Okay, the first thing we want to do is check your IP address since we moved the PC over to the uh, management network. As you can see, I'm in the 192.168.1 uh, network range. Uh, um, dot 100 is my PC's address here. And um, so that's good. That means we're plugged into the management network. And now I'm, I'm logged into the um, web interface for OpenSense. And if you go to the services DHCP v4 in the leases page, you can figure out the IP address of your wireless access point, which um, I'm using a grand stream wireless access point. And you can see that my um, IP address is dot 102. And so, uh, and, and then I already have it open up here to log in. We'll see the IP address is the same. So the default username and password is um, admin and the, on the bottom of your wireless access point, there is a password, um, a default password in there, and you'll need to use that. And this will be the master since it's the first um, device. Uh, as you can see, you can do master slave. They use that uh, kind of old school terminology. Um, and let's see, if you sign in, uh, it's going to, uh, I think, prompt us for a setup wizard because it, it knows that it's a new device here. So let's see what it does. Oh, see, it's gotten us to the setup wizard. We can click next. This helps you kind of get uh, set up real quick. Um, but we'll just go ahead and walk through it to show what it's going to do. This is the device. Um, it has uh, the firmware version and status is the master. Right? Let's click next. There's nothing really to do here um, that we need to do. Um, the SSID, we can call it. I'm just going to do HNG for home network guy. Um, and since what we're going to do is we will set up this first one and then I'll go back and edit it because I'll show you why, because it doesn't, um, it doesn't give you any options here to actually set up VLAN. So that's what we're going to do here in, uh, in a little bit, but we'll just walk through this to show you what the wizard looks like. So if you just want to get a, a one network set up real quick, it, it helps you walk through it. I'm just going to do WPA to just leave the defaults here. Um, as you can see that it already fills in the default password. You can change it to something else. And you see there's a minimum number of uh, characters you got to have for your pre-shared key. Uh, it won't let you go further without entering the proper number of characters. Um, and then we'll just hit complete. So it shows that's your member devices in there. Um, so we'll hit complete and then that sets up one default network. 
Um, so that's how easy it is to set one network up. It's actually it's loading all these services. It's kind of cool. It gives you the status of how of everything it's loading right now. So it just takes a minute. You can see what's taking uh, the longest. I think sometimes the the network service takes uh, the longest. You see, it's still spinning. Um, that's probably um, getting that the wireless network spun up. What we need to do is go to the SSIDs. And you can see we have no VLAN schedule or uh, set up for this one. So let's go ahead and edit this. Um, and we'll, we'll change the uh, SSID now. As, if you remember uh, in my previous configuration with OpenSense, I'm going to have wireless networks for um, VLAN 20, 30, 40, and 50. I'm just going to set up four. So let's change that to HNG 20 for VLAN 20, just to make it easy for us to tell it apart. Um, and we're going to click VLAN because we want it on VLAN 20. Other than that, you should be good just to leave everything else. Uh, you, there's some settings you can probably tweak later if you want. Now that we added that default network to be on VLAN 20, as you can see here, we need to add the other networks. And all you have to do is um, go up here and just click, you know, click Add Network. And we're going to go through and we're going to add our new networks. And we're going to enable the SSID and add a VLAN 30. Um, and we're going to add our password that's long enough. One thing that uh, I, I messed up when I first did this configuration is you can need to go over to device membership and add your um, network to this grand stream device. If you have multiple devices, you can click this box at the top and select multiple devices. But if you don't do this, even though you set your network up and you enabled it, it will not um, provision it to this device, to this wireless access point. So that's one little gotcha that you need to do. Um, so we just gotta uh, do this for the other um, VLAN networks. So we're going to do HNG 40. Um, this is uh, going to be a guest network. So one thing I'll show you here in a second is um, VLAN 40. Um, uh, since this is your guest network, what you might want to do is click on um, you know, client isolation and this will actually isolate all your devices within your uh, guest network so that they can't communicate with each other directly, which is something you might want to do because uh, for a little extra security, I'm not sure how much it actually adds, but every little layer and every little bit helps, right? If you're gonna have cell phones and stuff on your devices, you might wanna turn the, the DTIM period to three. Um, I've read that that helps improve battery life so it's not pinging your device as much on the wireless. Once you have all that stuff entered, you just click device membership. Almost forgot that step again, right? <laughs> We'll add that over and click save. And we'll do the final network here. Uh, let's go back up every time. Uh, um, there we go. We'll just add VLAN 50 to this. All right. And device membership. Okay. And we'll add it. And then we'll apply these changes. So next thing we need to do is test our, our wireless connections. As you can see, it says Wi-Fi not connected and we'll go to select network and you can see I have HNG 20 through 50 here. So let's click on 20 and we'll just connect to this. So let's look at um, the wireless network here, as you can see. It, we, we got an address that's in the uh, .20 network, so we know that's a good indication we got it working right because it, it assigned an IP address in that same network. So let's, uh, let's switch to HNG30. We'll test, we'll test each one of these. Okay. And it's not connected yet. Let's see, or add, there we go. Um, so you can see we got an address in the dot thirty range now, right? So if, as you can see, each one of these networks, since we have our uh, VLAN set up properly on the network switch and OpenSense, it's just uh, automatically assigning you addresses in the network that you're supposed to be in, which is great. So it's good to test each one of these real quick to make sure um, we didn't mess up any of the configuration. I'll give it a second there to switch over. Yep, see, dot 40. We're in the dot 40 network, and then let's test our last network here. Um, okay, and we're gonna click 50. HNG. 
<laughs> We're in H and G 50. Okay. And we just wait one second. Boom. Dot 50. So, uh, as you see how easy it is to set up one access point with the switch, um, when we verified that all the, um, uh, wireless networks get an IP address in the network they're supposed to be in the network range address range they're supposed to get an IP address and that all that occurs automatically with the DHCP settings that we set up for each of the networks so I'm happy to see that um, the switch configuration we did in the last video worked for this access point um, because I actually kind of I didn't bother testing it at that time because I already knew I had my VLAN configuration set up right. And I was just hoping that I didn't mess something up and I'd have to clarify something from the previous video. <laughs> so it worked out, kind of was testing on the fly there, but uh, I had confidence that I had that working because I had my other VLANs working from my other devices. So um, I was kind of fairly certain that this would work and I'm glad to, to see that it did when I um, fired up this wireless access point and assigned the VLANs to each network. I like to give a Shout out to Jason for helping me uh, with the network switch, the Cisco switch, and the Grandstream wireless wireless access point you see here, because um, that really helped me to be able to do this series without messing up my own home network, because I didn't have any extra hardware to, to spare that supported VLANs and a wireless access point that I wasn't using because I'm using all my stuff that I have. So that it makes it difficult to do video sometimes, but um, because I had the extra hardware, uh, made making this video a lot easier. So I appreciate that um, from Jason. If you um, want to check out his channel. That brings us to the conclusion of this four part series. Um, I hope you found this helpful. I, I consider this kind of to be the bare minimum network setup, uh, core infrastructure, because you know, you're going to have a modem, whether it's cable or fiber or whatever. Um, and you're going to need your uh, router firewall and you're going to need your network switch and then, you know, for your wire devices and then you need a wire, at least one wireless access point for all your wireless devices. So that way you can connect everything to your networks. I showed how to separate out those networks and, um, and how to lock some of that stuff down via firewall rules just using some various examples. And I demonstrated connecting two different uh, physical machines to these devices. And you can also plug in, you know, a virtual relation server in here and create virtual networks on that, which also make use of the VLAN configuration that you already have. So, you know, the possibilities are kind of endless right at this point. So you can start playing around with this and, and continuing to learn more and more as you go. That's what uh, I did when I first started. I mentioned before that I might, you know, do a couple more videos, you know, in the series at the end, but instead of like part five, six, seven, I will probably just do various different topics that you can build upon, um, this, you know, this core infrastructure that you have set up already. So I kind of wanted to do a more comprehensive view of this first, and then we can start diving into uh, deeper into different topics as uh, time goes on. Until the next video, I hope you learned a lot, um, and we'll continue to learn together as I, I continue to learn over time, and I hope you do too. Uh, I'll see you guys later.